Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for August 3rd, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is National Watermelon Day, Clean Your Floors Day, Cloves Syndrome Awareness Day, Cycle to Work Day, India Pale Ale Day, and Makira Ulawa Province Day. Go ahead and get started. Jesus says, Take heart, I am here. Do not be afraid. Come, Holy Spirit, kindle the fire of faith in our hearts. Amen. Our reading for today is from Exodus chapter 14, starting with verse 1. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and camp in front of pi Pahara, between Migdol and the sea, in front of baal Zephon. You shall camp opposite it by the sea. Pharaoh will say of the Israelites, They are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has closed in on them. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, so that I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed towards the people. And they said, What have we done? letting Israel leave our service. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took six hundred picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, All Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers and his army, they overtook them, camped by the sea, by Piharath, in front of Baal Zephon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, God has been leading the Hebrew people, and as we heard yesterday, did not lead them in the sort of more direct path, uh, the way that would be easier to go, but directed them in the harder path, in the wilderness. Now, the motivation that we are given in that first passage is this, that if they went on the easier path, they would go right through the land of the Philistines and there would be open war and these people are just not going to be able to handle it. They're going to run back to Egypt. There's a different motivation that is provided here, uh, or maybe an additional one, and that is it is a feint. It is a trick. When Pharaoh hears that these people are wandering, not directly towards home, but are wandering around and are kind of landlocked, that they're wandering in the wilderness, they're by the sea. It's a lure, it's a temptation to go and take them back. And in fact, that is what we hear happen. Pharaoh and his uh, um, advisors, all, all of the leaders, they say, "We're gonna. What have we done? Right? We we've, we've ruined ourselves 
again, back to this fact that they had created a world where economically they were dependent on this free labor. Labor of people who were the, not their own people. They had enriched themselves on the labor and the backs of others. And now those others have gone away. And they realize, gosh, right? We're, we're going to actually have to pay for this labor. Our economy is built on this system of enslavement. And we've lost all of these workers. We've lost all these things. We have to do this work. What's going What's going to happen? Oh, you know what's going to be easier? Let's go get them back. We'll force them back. Throughout the, the, you know, talk of all of the strikes, the plagues against Egypt, we have seen Pharaoh waffle back and forth and saying, okay, you can go. And then when the plague goes away, no, no, wait, I've, I've changed my man, mind. So this is just a continuation of that. God hardens Pharaoh's heart or maybe weighs Pharaoh's heart, seeing that it is hardened. But to a certain extent, there's also sort of an entrapment side of things here. That God is creating a situation that Pharaoh is naturally, because of everything else that we've seen of Pharaoh, he's going to chase these people and it's going to lead to his demise. And God says, this is the reason for this, so that I will show myself to be great. That there will be no question who is in control of this situation. Back to that battle between the gods, uh, sort of motif of ancient battles. So Ver Pharaoh takes this huge group. In fact, ultimately we have all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots in addition to the 600 picked chariots. So Pharaoh is going out with his entire army. And we'll be talking about chariots, but just to suffice it to say at this point, the chariots are the most advanced weaponry platforms of the day. These are the, you know, highest level, you know, jet fighters that we have or whatever it is, right? This is the most advanced tanks. This is the most advanced military um, stuff, right? Um, these are really advanced weaponry. And the picked, um, these picked chariots are covered with, with this, um, it's a mix of gold and tin, I think, or, or something else. Um, and so they shine in the day. So it's not only that they're uh, sort of daunting because of their technological prowess, but it also has this sort of um, psychological warfare side of things because the, the light is shining off of these chariots as they're coming. Pharaoh is ready for a fight. Pharaoh is coming to take back what is his, he thinks. And God is ready for a fight. We will see how that unfolds. I'm, I'm taking this piece by piece because this is, a, this is a major thing. Just like the Exodus itself, and it's sort of broken up into all sorts of different things. There's, there's a lot of things going on. First, I, I want to sort of, again, bring it a little bit closer to home. And think about the the mass liberation of a whole group of people, right? So when the Emancipation Proclamation was made and, and there was the end to the Civil War or the War of Northern Aggression, whatever you might call it, right? Historically, we look and there was a very clear... Um, move. The entire southern economy was based on the free labor of others. 
Now, I know it wasn't completely free, right? Because you had to pay room and board and all that sort of stuff. But it was dependent. It was enriched by the fact that a third of the population was not free. They were enslaved. They had to work. The entire culture, the, the entire society, the entire economy was based around the fact that they had enslaved labor. It existed in the North, but not to the same degree. The entire economy was not based on it. So when these people are freed, when enslavement ends, things are different. And there were some who, like Pharaoh, looked at this situation and said, how in the world can we get along in this world where that is not the case? And they did something about it. And so we have the Jim Crow laws. We have segregation, this very clear continuation of a lot of those principles, a lot of those sort of ways of being. That while these formerly enslaved black folks were not technically enslaved anymore, they were still treated absolutely as second-class citizens, and the economy was based on their labor. This was institutionalized and didn't go away until things rapidly changed and there's a whole thing about senators and uh, the ability to kind of stay on forever and ever and ever. So one of the three times, including right now, when the sort of uh, median age of senators was really high was because there were Southern senators who just stayed on forever and ever so that they could keep hold of this system. So segregation finally ended through hard fought battles, civil rights movement, and it continues today. We might look around ourselves and recognize some of those same systems in place, not always around racial issues, but sometimes yes but an economy that is completely based on the subsistence uh, labor, paying people what is absolute, absolute minimum, and not in a way that they can actually support themselves. Makes you wonder, makes you think, hey, what's going on here? Everything is coming to a head in this story. This will be the final conflict between Pharaoh and God. And it's Pharaoh's hubris. It's Pharaoh's commitment to an unjust system that will lead to his own demise. So we'll see where it goes. Take some time to reflect on these things. In meditation, in prayer, maybe some journaling, maybe some historical research. And when you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to recognize you when our neighbors say, I am hungry. Give us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and strength to serve you this day and always. Amen.
We pray this day for the needs of our congregation and community. We pray for the family and friends of Jim Kennedy, whose service is on Monday. We pray for Bria, the granddaughter of Beverly. We pray for the family and friends of Fran, another friend of Beverly K. These are all Beverly K. Continued prayers for the Mayfields as they search for a home. For Catherine, a friend of Sandy, as she recovers from surgery. For Zoe, the granddaughter of Amy, who's at the Mayo Clinic being assessed for brain surgery. For the family and friends of Dawn, a friend of Ashley M., who passed away. We thank God for David, Bill's brother, who is recovering from surgery. For the family and friends of Janet, who passed away, Jeanette, excuse me, uh, who passed away and whose service will be on Wednesday, today. The family of Mel, who passed away, as well as for Carol, his widow, who is recovering from a fall. We pray that you would help us to build congregational vitality. Dismantle structural racism. Eradicate systemic poverty. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember our neighbors and we ask ourselves, when did I give you food? Bless what we have done, forgive what we have failed to do, and make us ready to meet you when you come in glory. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am with you always. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org for more information. You can join us on Sunday mornings at 1030. This for the rest of the month, we have also August cool down nights, learning about the Matthew 25 uh, invitation movement from the Presbyterian Mission Agency. That will be at five o'clock with a light supper. And then at six, we'll have a free concert for part of our uh, Sundays at six series. This week, we have Sarah Ruth Altman. Our readings today came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Our liturgy came from the Presbyterian Mission Agency, Matthew 25, Worship Resources. Like this, uh, I already said that, but you can watch this video in video form on YouTube. You can listen to it on Spotify, and you can get an email with both of those on Substack. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.